welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we have a classic French recipe for you that we think you're going to love. This is straight out of Julia Child's The Joy of French Cooking, and it is a cheese souffle. This is the traditional method for a cheese souffle. Uh, don't be put off by how complicated people may make this sound. It's actually not all that tough. Uh, it is a little finicky, but we're going to just get going in the ingredients here. So we're going to be using some eggs. We have some flour. Not very much, just a little bit. We have some uh, cayenne pepper, some nutmeg, and some salt here. We have uh, some breadcrumbs. Now this is going to be used to line our ramekins. We have some milk. Uh, we have some butter uh, separated into two. Uh, part of that is going to be part of the sauce, and part of it is going to be to line those cups. And some cheese, obviously. Now this is the same medium cheddar we used for our uh, cheese soup last week. So we're going to start by getting our ramekins ready. We're just going to put a little bit of that butter into each of them. So this is the smaller portion of the butter. And we're just going to give uh, those ramekins a little rub with the butter. Make sure they're well coated on the inside. We just want to make sure that they have a good uh, a good coating of the butter. And uh, that's going to be what holds the breadcrumbs in uh, to keep everything from sticking inside the, the containers. So once you have those lined, you're just going to add a little bit of the breadcrumbs into a couple of them and give it a little swirl around to make sure that they're all uh, nicely coated on the inside with those breadcrumbs. Just give it a little tap at the end to get any extra out and you can move them on to the next ramekin. Very, very easy. This is just going to make sure that nothing sticks to the inside of your ramekins. And there you go, once those are all done, you can move on to grating your cheese. So we're just going to use the large grater on our box grater here. Now traditionally, uh, this is frequently done with something like a Parmesan, or the traditional French is really with a Swiss or Emmental or something like that. Uh, Comté is delicious in this, but if you don't have access to those or uh, this is easier to find, we're just using a regular um, sort of Cracker Barrel, Black Diamond, standard medium cheddar. It works just fine. It'll be, it'll be delicious as well. So we're going to put some heat under a pot, and we're going to start by melting the larger portion of our butter. And you want to make sure that this gets all well melted. And uh, this is going to be the base of our uh, uh, bechamel in here. So we're just going to break that up a little bit to so make it melt a little faster. And we're going to wait until that is all well melted, and then we're going to add our flour. And we're going to give that a good stir. We want to make sure it's blended well. We don't want any lumps in this for sure. Uh, so we're going to keep giving this a good stir until it's nice and smooth. And this is going to form the base of our bechamel. So just give that a nice stir until it is smooth and begins to cook. So once you see that there are no more lumps of flour or anything, uh, it's, it's going to start cooking very quickly. As soon as you notice that it starts to uh, stick a little bit to the bottom and gets a little bit foamy, that means it's cooked. So here is what it, this is what it's going to look like. So you can see it's foaming up a little bit. It's just starting to stick at the bottom a bit. It is ready to go. So what we have done is we have uh, scalded our milk. So this uh, milk, you can scald it in a pot, or if you don't want to use another pot, you can scald it in the microwave in a glass container. And we're just going to add that uh, hot milk into our sauce. Now we bring out the whisk. And we just want to make sure that this gets nice and well blended once again. So back onto the heat, but we're going to turn it way, way down. And we're going to give that a good stir. And you can see already it has thickened up. That is our bechamel. So that's going to cook for a little while. Uh, we're going to add our spices now. So the salt, the nutmeg, and the cayenne pepper gets added now. And we're not done with this yet, because the next step from here is we're going to enrich this with some egg yolks. 
So give that a good stir until it is nice and uh, frothy and you can see that everything's well blended and it has thickened up nicely. It's really, really excellent simple bechamel sauce. And that's it for that part. Uh, we're just going to make sure that everything is excellent and smooth in there. as the bechamel just cooks together. So you can see here that it is all well cooked. It is getting nice and smooth. It is thickening up even more as we're cooking it on that low, low heat. And then we're just gonna take that off the heat for the moment. And that part is done. So that can sit now. So now we're gonna separate our eggs. Now the traditional recipe calls for six uh, sorry, five egg whites and four egg yolks. Now, our recipe is a little bit complicated, as you can see, by the first egg we opened had two yolks in it. Now that really is fine. It means we're going to have slightly more yolk because it's two smaller yolks. Um, so when you see us putting five yolks in later, remember that two of them are very, very small. But we are separating our eggs, so... Uh, it is five egg whites and four egg yolks for this one. You can use the other yolk for anything else that you might need an egg yolk for. So here we have our separated yolks and our whites. And we are going to, uh, now we are going to beat the whites. So the uh, we're going to put this into our mixer using our whisk attachment. You can do this by hand, but it's uh, certainly easier to, uh, to do it with a, an electric mixer. making sure it's plugged in, of course. And uh, we're gonna add a tiny bit of salt to this and also as we did with the um, egg whites that we beat for the marshmallow fluff, we're gonna add a tiny bit of cream of tartar or uh, tartaric acid. Again, this is something you can get uh, in the baking aisle of most grocery stores. It's uh, just a white powder in the spice rack or in the baking aisle and uh, usually called cream of tartar. We're just adding a little bit of that. All the uh, amounts of the ingredients, of course, are going to be in the description below, as usual. And while that's whipping, we're going to start uh, enriching our bechamel here with, uh, with the egg yolks. So we're just going to add them one at a time and whip them in until they are well blended. You don't want to make scrambled eggs here, so one at a time until they are just blended smooth in there and you can see that uh, turning a little bit yellow getting a little richer uh, it's going to be a little thicker when this is all done and here are our little tiny ones at the end here now remember normally this should be four <laughs> but we had two tiny ones from our first egg which was a double yolk And that's it. So that's done. Our bechamel is now enriched. It's still nice and warm, so now we're going to go back to our uh, egg whites, and they should be stiff peaks, but don't over whip them. This is just about right, maybe a tiny bit over. And that is definitely stiff peaks. So we're going to take that over to our enriched bechamel, and we're going to add just about a quarter of it, just to start. Now, uh, right now, it's not quite thick enough to be able to fold it, so the first bit, we're just going to stir it in without disturbing it too much. It doesn't have to be completely uniform for this. Um, if there are little swirls of um, egg white and uh, the enriched bechamel, that's fine. So we're going to also add our cheese, reserving just a little tiny bit to, uh, to just decorate on top. And just give that a gentle stir in. So you can see that first bit uh, mostly has gone smooth. Uh, so now we're going to add another about third of what we had left. And we're just going to give that a gentle, gentle stir. 
we just want to fold it. We don't want to combine it completely. We don't want it necessarily smooth at this point. And at this point, we can add the rest of it in. And you just want it combined just barely. It doesn't have to be smooth. You can see Chef Caleb here is just uh, sort of letting it go through the uh, the whisk together to to combine. And that's as far as you have to go with this. You don't have to get it much more uniform than this um, as we add the last little bit. You just want it, yeah, just barely combined. And this is the tricky part because the the uh, the temptation to overmix this is very strong. You definitely feel like it's not quite uh, smooth enough, or it's not. Uh, it doesn't have to be. This is about where you want it. So at this point, you can start adding it to your uh, prepared ramekins. Now, depending on the size of your ramekins, you may have enough for uh, more than this. You may have. Uh, uh, you may have the right amount for the number of ramekins you have. It really depends on the size. So we ended up having enough for uh, seven of them. And we're just going to decorate the top with a little bit of cheese. And that's going to melt nicely in the oven, give it a good texture and a nice bit of color on top. And that's going to go in the oven. So we're going to put that in for 25 minutes. Really, you should reduce the temperature to 375 and go for 25 to 35 minutes. You have to be a little bit careful because they can fall. But as you can see, ours came out perfectly. 25 minutes and they were done. They puffed up beautifully. Nice golden brown top on, on the top there. Uh, they cracked a little bit. They just came out absolutely perfect. And uh, they were delicious. They were fantastic. You can serve this with a little bit of a sauce. Uh, you can drizzle some cheese sauce on top of that. Fantastic. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, not as complicated as uh, people make it out to be. They're amazing. If you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to love your food.